Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to my channel. My name is Miracle Mimi for short. If this is the first time seeing my beautiful face, you're welcome. So, our next video is from Tammy Peterson and Jordan Peterson's wife. Her testimony of a rosary. Let's check it out. She had a very rare cancer, which was 100% fatal, and which generally conferred upon its bearer a lifespan of approximately 10 months. People can imagine what that would be like. My mother's family, they all died fairly young from cancer and different kinds of things. When I was sitting in the office with my husband, we were shocked, but I also thought back to my family and how everyone had passed away early and there was cancer and I thought, okay, you know, maybe, you know, this is my destiny genetically. And so I went home to tell my son. I didn't expect the response that I got and I saw terrible grief in his eyes. And somehow that grief reflected back to me, his love for me, and I realized that I did not have that same feeling of worthiness for myself. And I thought, whatever time I have left, I want to devote myself to loving uh, my family and my friends and accepting whatever help comes my way. Well, Tammy's always been a stoic sort of person. She's not one to make mountains out of molehills. She handled the news of her illness and then the surgery and the aftermath of the surgery with her customary grace. They had taken out all the lymph. There was one place where it didn't heal properly and my body filled up with fluid. I had lost 30 pounds. They put me in the hospital and Queen Yu came to visit. So when I found out that Tammy was sick, I emailed her and mentioned that I wanted to visit her if she was in town. And she mentioned that she was at the Toronto General Hospital. I prepared a gift package for her. She came with a blessed rosary that the Pope had blessed and a small picture of Mother Mary holding Jesus. And it was an Asian representation of the Virgin Mary. When Tammy saw the rosary, she said, well, this is a rosary. And I was surprised. And I said, you know what it is? And she said, yes, but I don't know how to use it. When you learn to pray the rosary, which I had never done, she would say the first part and I would say the last part of each prayer. And she would tell me the story of each mystery and then ask what intention I wanted if I wanted to pray for anyone. And so we would pray and I would tell her my life story and I would cry. But it really soothed me and I would go back to my room sense. and my husband would usually there be sleeping in my bed waiting for me to come back. I'd wake him up and get back into bed and then we'd play cards for the rest of the day and this happened every day for five weeks. So she came every day. Tammy spent time with her praying. And then you might say, well, what was she doing when she was praying? And I would say she was doing what Job does in the book of Job, which was attempting to reconcile herself to the torments that were being visited upon her through no apparent fault of her own. And one of the conclusions that Job comes to as a consequence of his trials was that when the hell of suffering, unjust suffering opens up around you, you can make it much worse by also being bitter and resentful and ungrateful and shaking your hands at fate and God, perhaps at yourself too. And so Tammy didn't do that. She certainly faced her impending fate with grace and attempted to do that consciously. And the prayer was a aid in that endeavor. I think when you're chronically ill, just the littlest thing can really be uh, excruciating. And so uh, the prayers help me get through excruciating scans. I wouldn't really even notice the pain that I was in as long as I prayed without fail. You know, like just constantly prayed. I never allowed myself to worry. I just gave myself to, to God and to the prayer to take me where I needed to go, where he needed me to go, whatever he needed me to go through. I decided that it wasn't up to me anymore, and I think I had led my life like that way for a very, very long time. And this trial, this challenge was given to me 
to come to this realization, and, and I did. Thank the Lord, right? She wasn't praying to live. She wasn't praying that God would provide her with some special dispensation. She was praying that she would conduct herself as appropriately as could possibly be managed given the situation at hand. And that's what it means in some ways to put yourself in the hands of God. You don't know what the right outcome is and maybe it's that you live and maybe it isn't. What you can pray for is that you handle what's thrown at you in the best possible manner, whatever that is. And that can be a very demanding aim. And that's a terrible thing to be called upon to do, but all other pathways merely make hell deeper. And Queenie was useful, I would say, in three ways. One was as a conduit to a traditional faith, Catholicism, as a friend who was there above and beyond the call of duty, and then also as someone who could teach Tammy the prayer practice of the rosary and also practice that with her as master to apprentice in some ways. And so how did that change Tammy? She got better at confronting her destiny with grace. She also learned to value herself more, not in the narcissistic sense that elevates someone above anyone else, but in the sense that you should extend to yourself the same love that you would extend to someone for whom you cared. And she got much better at that, and that's continued. Both of those have continued. And that is definitely a consequence of the prayer practice, because she does that for about an hour a day in the morning, and that prepares her as prayer should, so that she can confront the demands of the day in the best possible set of mind. And the best possible set of mind is one of like an open, childlike gratitude, which is a very difficult state to attain, but well worth the effort. So when I was in the hospital, they were looking for this leak and they couldn't find it, but they found someone in the States, in Pennsylvania, who's an interventional radiologist. And before I left, Queenie said, well, would you like to be blessed before you go? And I said, yes. So Father Eric, came to my apartment and he blessed me and he asked me to pray on gratitude and he gave me the novena for the sick, which is nine days of prayer. Father Eric gave her a scapular, explained the novena for the sick to St. Jose Maria. He explained to Tammy how to pray it. And I took that with me. The first day I met the surgeon and he did a procedure on me and the next day I woke up and he said he was not able to find the leak. So then that was the second day of prayer. And they were getting me ready for surgery again and this time they were gonna open me up and look. And the thing is, the lymph is, is a spider web. How are you gonna find anything in there? I mean, really, it, it's just, it's beyond me to think how anybody would even think they could find it, but he said he could do it. And they said, you know, the only way we would know if you were healed or not is if you ate something with fat in it and it would show in the bag because the lymph actually takes care of the fat. It was the fourth day and I thought, you know, I should just eat some fat because who knows, because I'm going to go for surgery tomorrow anyway. So I think I had an egg, a whole egg. And I looked at the bag and I thought, well, I don't see anything in there, but you know, I don't know. So the next morning, I was having breakfast and the intern came out and head nurse and they were looking very serious and they said, I think you better do a challenge, a food challenge. And I said, oh, I, I did that last night. They said, okay, well, let's see the bag. And so I lifted up the bag and the bag was clear. Oh, well, if, if there's no cloudiness in the bag, then, then the hole has healed itself. And this was the fifth day of praying the novena but it wasn't just the fifth day of praying the novena. Earlier that year, I first started to realize that I was not going to get better anytime soon. My husband was really upset and I said, you know, I'll be better on our anniversary. And that day was August 19th, it was our anniversary. You know, it's very difficult to disentangle these things because we had excellent surgeons. The intervention of the radiologist 
could well have irritated the tissue that was damaged enough to facilitate healing. And that's the simplest explanation, but the fact that it did occur on our 30th wedding anniversary, and that is what Tammy had said would happen months before when she had no way of knowing that or having any reason to assume it. Well, you know, I don't know what to make of that. I'm pretty happy about it. She's also, as far as we know, the only person who ever survived this cancer. So that's also, that's how it is. Things have changed for me a lot since I started praying the rosary. The more you follow what God wants you to follow, the more adventurous and more challenging everything becomes. I've been accepting to do things that I never would have accepted before. So it's very, very much changed my life. Now, when we go on tour, he's asked me to come and open shows for him, which is unbelievable to, for me to go up on a stage where there are 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, 13,000 people in the crowd. I ask for courage and strength before I go out on stage. I prepare what I'm going to say through the day. I meditate on what I'm going to say, but I don't take any paper up there with me. In 2017, when I went on tour with my husband, I sat in his lectures for 250 lectures. I'd never really listened to my husband. I sat in the audience, so I was listening like everyone else was listening and learning from what he was saying. I was praying the rosary. So praying the rosary along with all of the intellectual learning that was going on was, was um, enriching what I was, what I had learned from the rosary. And so that moment of change where I felt the Holy Spirit fill me was an accumulation of all those years of praying the rosary, of learning more and more about the biblical stories, about having a family and becoming responsible. Everything that I learned was bringing me closer. Likely what she's discovered more particularly as a consequence of moving in the Catholic direction is that she's discovered the identity between Christ and the truth. Now, people don't understand what that means, but there's lots of things that are true that people don't understand. Prayer is a practice. Faith is a practice. The rosary is a practice. Why are they a practice? It's because you're going to go through hard times in your life and nothing will survive except for the things you practice. When life ends and everything is obliterated, the only thing that you will find in the ashes are the things that you practiced. And so decide what that's going to be. Okay, let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women Hi guys. and blessed I'm is the fruit. Happy that I came across this video like this video is an eye opener to me. I don't know. I don't know to order to others, but it's an eye opener to me. I'm a Christian, yes, but I'm not a Catholic. I just recent. I was not born up. I was not born and raised in the Catholic home or in the Catholic church. But I've always followed my other brothers to church to a Catholic church here in Nigeria. And I see. And my brother, he always pray his rosary, his divine mercy during the time of divine mercy. He always pray with his rosary he doesn't joke with it but like seeing Tammy right now like is an inspiration to me what will stop me to, for me to go and also I can't wait to even also pray to Mary because because I went to a Catholic school from my just one to my just three it was a boarding school a Catholic school for that matter so we, we don't always joke with our rosary prayers we don't always joke with any of the prayers that is related to it we don't normally joke with it we always pray our rosary and i one thing i've come to know then about this rosary is that it always brings peace among us even during our trying and tough time it's always and it always make us to be connected to god it always make you to feel make you to pour out your hearts to god 
like this Tommy Tammy testimony is really really a great testimony and thanks to Queenie God bless you Queenie for doing this for your friend if not for Queenie only God know where Tammy oh only God know where Tammy will be in the right now only God know the story of Tammy right now like I'm so so happy Queenie help us as a good friend she is she's really really a good friend and I am so happy that Tammy did not regret using or praying with her rosary and i saw her and i'm also grateful that her eyes open and one thing i want to let all all of us know is that keep we should keep praying because that's the one thing that nobody can take away from us even the devil the devil can never never take this away from us except you want the devil to take it from you but for me he can never 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 take it i think i have to go back to my rosary I have to go back to praying to the rosary again because I can't, I would not like to, I can't even remember when I hold a rosary in my hands to pray. It's been long. Should I say last was when I went to school, when I was during my secondary school days, my just one to just three days. That has been last I pray my rosary. But right now, seeing Tammy's testimony, it just opened my eyes to reality, to things about the rosary. Thank you, Tammy, and I wish you everlasting healing. May God continue to perfect what He has started in your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Like, watch, and subscribe to my channel. And have a wonderful day ahead. Bye bye.